In a previous section, we talked about adding CSS files and JavaScript files through your theme layer. And we sort of glossed over the fact that you can conditionally add CSS and JavaScript with a little bit of code inside of your template.php file. A lot of the times you'll want to conditionally add CSS and JavaScript that's module based through your module, but if it's definitely a theme based script or CSS file, you want to add it through your template.php file. And in this section, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be extending the bat theme that we built from scratch. And so let's go ahead and make sure that we have the right files open. Jump to your base directory for your Drupal site, and in your sites, all themes bat folder. And if you don't have this set up, then you may need to review some of the previous videos in this series. Go ahead and open up the .info file, bat.info. Jump back to the directory. And go ahead and open up the template.php file as well. Go ahead and jump back to your bat.info file. And we need to remove a line here for the style sheets because we're going to be working with this same style sheet to add it conditionally. And because it's currently in our .info file, it's being added on every page. Let's go ahead and just remove this and save it. Next, we need to open up the step file for this particular video. So jump to your resource pack directory, and in it, we're going to go ahead and open up the 16th step called template.php, conditional JS, and CSS. Go ahead and copy the entire code, and paste it over the code that's currently in your template.php file, and save it. Now we've added a number of lines that are all currently commented out. And we've got three different cases for conditionally adding CSS or JavaScript files. The basic idea is that when we want to conditionally add a CSS or JS file, we're going to put it in a pre-processing function in our theme. Right now we're using the bat preprocess page function, which is our page preprocess function. But we can also add this code inside of other preprocessing functions as well, like the block preprocessing function or the node preprocessing function. Inside of this function, we're going to create conditional logic that tests for certain conditions. And we have this variable right here, which is the collection of variables that will get passed to the page template to leverage if we want to look for certain conditions. And this variable contains items like the current node that's being loaded, if it's a node-based page, various properties of the page itself, and also the user. So we're going to do three conditional tests, one to check for a node type and add a CSS style sheet conditionally based on that, one to test against the current path, and then one to test against the role of the currently logged in user. Okay. Now in order for this to work, we need to make sure that our bat theme is enabled and set as default. So I'm going to jump back to the browser. If you haven't already, go ahead and navigate to the appearance page by clicking the appearance link in the menu. And then make sure that your theme is enabled by default by looking at the top of the enabled theme section. And we're going to look for bat build a theme and make sure that there's not a set default link in this set of links right here. Okay, and then jump back to the home page where we'll see our theme enabled. Now remember this is a very simple theme so it's not there's not a lot of styling attached to it yet. If you remember from a previous video, the only thing that our style sheet does is it adds a yellow background to the heading 1 tag. So we see that right here at the top. Now we've removed it from our info file but it's still being registered because we haven't cleared our theme registry yet. So we need to go ahead and clear our caches in order to rebuild the registry. So I'm going to go ahead and click up at the top here, hover over the home button, click flush all caches in the admin menu toolbar. And now we see that our heading one doesn't have the background anymore. So our style sheet is not being added now. Okay, jump back to your editor. And let's go ahead and do the first test. We're going to uncomment this out by removing the slash and star at the top and at the bottom of this example and then go ahead and save it. Let me go ahead and walk you through each line here. So what we're doing is looking for a variable inside of this variables array called node 
which will contain the node information for the node that's currently being loaded on the page if it's a node page. If it's not a node-based page, for example, it's a view or a contact form, then this variable isn't going to exist. So we want to check to make sure that it exists first before we go through any logic. If it does and passes, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, which is checking for a particular type of node. So this is if we want to add a style sheet for only particular node types that require certain styling. Maybe they have fields that look a little bit different, or the even the page is going to look a bit different depending on the node style. So we're going to look inside of this node variable, which is an object, and we're going to check for the type and make sure that it's article. If that matches, then we're going to go ahead and add a CSS file using the Drupal add CSS function. Now if you've been watching the video sequentially, you've seen this function already used in modules to add CSS files. But we need to get the path to the style sheet that we're going to add. So we're going to use a function called Drupal get path. And as a first parameter, we're going to pass it theme because we're looking for a theme directory as opposed to a module directory. We're going to pass it the name of the theme, which is bat, B-A-T. And then we're going to append style.css with a slash to complete our path. Now, if you're curious what we have to work with inside of this preprocess function, you can use a debugger or something like varidump in order to see what's inside of this variables array. What I'm going to do now is create a debug stop here right in the first line so we can take a look at what happens when the script gets to this point. Now if you're not familiar with debuggers, you can watch a few of the other videos on the site that work through the process of setting up a debugger and explaining what a debugger does. I'm going to jump back to the browser and I'm going to click on this button down here in order to start my debugging session and then I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. I'm going to jump back to my editor and you see this yellow arrow here which indicates that our script is stopped and we can look at the variables that are inside of it. And if we look at the locals tab here at the bottom we'll see that we only have one variable currently defined inside of this function and it's called variables. I'm going to go ahead and expand it. And these are all of the variables that we have to work with that we can conditionally check against. A couple of useful variables inside of here include isFront right here, which will tell us whether we're currently on the home page of the site, and this language variable, which you can expand for more information, which will tell you what language is currently enabled. And this may determine to some degree how you want to style the page. Now there's a lot more information there. And then there's also the super globals, like the post and get variables. And if you click on this, you'll see that we can also look at cookies. We can look at the URL to see what's being passed through the URL. If this is a form-based post, we can look to see what the results are there. We can look in a user session as well. So we have a wide range of variables that we can work with. So this first one is just testing for the node. And if you noticed, as we were going through the local variables here, there was not a node variable. So as we see, it goes from main menu to page here. So that means that when we conduct this logic here, that it won't get past this point, and so the CSS file should not be loaded for any page that doesn't have the node variable. So let's go ahead and make sure that our template file is saved and test this. I'm going to go ahead and end my debugging session. And if you're following along using a printr or verdum statement, make sure that that's removed. I'm going to jump back to the browser. And I'm going to turn off debugging here. And then I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. And you see that the yellow background on the heading one tag is not displaying. And this is right, this is our home page. We're at slash node, which means that this is not a node-based page. So let's go ahead and go to a node-based page. Now remember that we're checking for the article content type, so let's make sure that we're going to go to an article node. I'm going to go ahead and click on the content link at the top of the page here. And in here we see a list of content, and we see that there are several under the basic page type, but we want to find one that has article, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. Now if you're following along, you can use different types 
and just make sure that you have a content type of that type that you can test against. I'm going to go ahead and click the link. And you see that now our heading one tag has the yellow background. So this means that our style sheet is being included.